when we try to manage moose here in the province, we do it to strike a balance between hunter harvest and success rates and sustainability of moose populations and reducing human moose conflicts. For the 2022-23 season, we've reduced the overall quota for the autumn Newfoundland and Labrador by 659 licenses. This brings the total change over the last five years to a reduction of just under 4,500 licenses. So generally we've been reducing the number of licenses available in the province and we're doing that in response to changes in moose populations. Uh, most of the license reductions for the 2022-2023 season are in the eastern portion of the province, so from the uh, Clarenville Terra Nova Park region east. And that's because for most of that region now, we've reduced moose populations over the last uh, five to eight years to the target densities. And now we're going to pull back the license numbers a little bit to improve hunter success rates, but we're still going to try and maintain those lower overall densities to reduce human moose conflict. We have made a few small adjustments in other parts of the island, but we're generally at status quo for much of central Newfoundland, western Newfoundland, and the northern peninsula. This year we're moving to primarily online only applications for the big game draw. You've probably received a notification via email if you're already in our online system, or via Canada Post if you're not, telling you how to create an account or if any information needs to be updated for the upcoming season. With this online account, you can apply for the big game draw. You can receive notifications of whether you were successful in the draw and you can fill in hunter returns among other things. We are also extending the application period from the normal four weeks to nine weeks for the 2022-2023 season to give people lots of time to convert their accounts, get used to the online system and get their applications in. We're adding black bear tooth collection to the cooperating hunter program. So for the last couple of years, uh, cooperating hunters have been able to submit moose jawbones and caribou jawbones, and this is really important information for us for wildlife management. We're now going to be adding black bear teeth to this. So if you have a black bear license, you harvest a black bear, you can go on our website and get information about how to remove that tooth and submit it to Wildlife Division. Certainly since we've brought back the jawbone collection program, we've seen great cooperation from hunters. We've had uh, just over 6,000 jawbones submitted in the last two years and we really appreciate that work. We're also going to be helping hunters achieve higher success rates by providing them information about where moose can be found in the landscape. So for moose management areas that we've surveyed in the last few years, uh, associated with the hunting trapping guide on our website, we're going to be putting up information pages for each of our moose management areas. And these information pages will have maps that show uh, high density areas for moose and some statistics on the moose management area so you can know uh, detailed information about success rates for different license types like either sex and male only licenses, whether the population is going up and down that area, the percentage of bulls in the area, the kind of information that biologists use to make decisions about quotas, we're now going to put in the hands of hunters to help them achieve higher success rates. We're going to be integrating the not-for-profit licenses into the draw system. There'll still be a separate pool of licenses, but we'll have a draw in place. The demand for these licenses has been exceeding supply for the last couple of years. We're getting a couple of hundred more applications than we have licenses available, so we're going to have to bring in a draw system the same way we do for resident hunters. We'll also be limiting the number of people who can be named on a not-for-profit licenses to four individuals. In the upcoming year, we'll be prohibiting the use of those uh, 225 caliber centerfire rifles during the big game season. So from September 10th until December 31st, you'll be unable to use those rifles. These rifles are typically used for hunting uh, coyotes under the Coyote Wolf shooting license. Uh, but there have been a number of concerns in recent years about the off-license use of these guns for hunting big game and other types of poaching activities. So we're going to be prohibiting their use during the big game season. On January 1st, you will be able to use these rifles under the Coyote Wolf shooting license. We're going to be removing ptarmigan from the general small game license and creating a ptarmigan only license. Uh, the reason we're doing this is we have some conservation concerns around rock ptarmigan here on the island. So we have two species of ptarmigan in Newfoundland. We have willow ptarmigan, which is much more common and widespread, and we have rock ptarmigan, which is really limited to upland, alpine-like areas and, and usually rel relatively remote places. And we've seen some evidence that the hunting pressure on the rock ptarmigan, which is much smaller in population size, has been quite high in recent years. So we're separating the ptarmigan licenses out so we can get specific harvest data around ptarmigan. In order to protect those rock ptarmigan from overharvest, we're also going to be cutting the bag limit for those that species of ptarmigan in half. So in areas where it was previously uh, 
six as a daily limit with a 12 bird possession will now be three as a daily limit with a six bird possession and in areas where it was previously 12 and 24 respectively those will be cut in half to, to six and 12. So that covers all the changes for the 2022-2023 season. So whether you're a moose hunter or you're going to be taking a black bear and submitting a tooth for the first time or you're a dedicated ptarmigan hunter, I hope you're able to get out and enjoy the great Newfoundland Labrador outdoors.